now that the Nothing Phone 2 has been out for over five months, the dust has settled, updates have been pushed out, and we get to look at the phone through a different lens. The design remains clean and simple, yet very polarizing. That's due to a mostly basic design language found throughout the hardware in conjunction with the style of the back of the phone. A look that nothing lives by with their products. However, the tech community continues to be split on this look, especially with the Glyph interface. Some call it a gimmick, others find enjoyment and practicality in it. Love it or hate it though, the looks are always one of the first, if not the first, topic of discussion when talking about this phone. At the end of the day, it's all about personal taste though. If you don't like the lights, you can always turn them off. Personally, I like the Glyph lights. It's neat to have virtual responses for things like Google Assistant, charging progress, timers, volume level, notifications, and more. And while I admittedly haven't used the Composer regularly, it is genuinely fun to mess around with every once in a while. Have these lights become something I can't live without? No, but they are cool to have. Over time, I've become more appreciative of things like the display. It's not the highest end panel, but that's fine. At 1080p, it's still sharp, colorful, and smooth. The bezels are fully symmetrical, which is great, and it's just nice to look at and use. I also love the placement of the volume and power buttons. This isn't exactly a small phone, so having the hardware keys in a comfortable position is always a plus. Other things need some work, however. Though not a deal breaker, the in-display fingerprint reader is placed a bit too low for my taste, and the stereo speakers, while they serve their purpose, don't sound nearly as good as I feel they should. They lack in multiple areas, especially when it comes to low end, and they don't sound very full at all. After using multiple phones this year, a number of which arrived after this one, my opinion on these speakers has only been reinforced. Um, I've got my fingers crossed for a better sounding set in the Nothing Phone 3. In the same vein as the Glyph interface, Nothing OS is an attempt at approaching user experience with a unique skin, keeping things simple but distinctive. Yet again another area for personal taste, but with even more control over how things look and feel. Even still, yes, Nothing OS is pretty minimal, some would argue to its detriment. Some even find it to be a bit too close to stock Android, coming across as very plain and boring. It's a valid argument, if I'm being honest, but I'll admit, while I like the cleanliness of the UI in general, I do end up missing what other phones have to offer. This isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. For some, however, this will fit the bill. But another thing I come across to appreciate more as time has gone on, even going back to the Nothing Phone 1, is that Nothing continues to add some new features to the OS in an effort to enhance the UX, thereby creating something that goes a little deeper than just a slightly tweaked version of stock Android. While there's still plenty of work for Nothing to put into this, their trajectory has been pretty good so far, in terms of software updates. They even let you obtain Android 14 by manually updating to Nothing OS 2.5 through their developer preview program. You'd be surprised at how many unique features it comes packed with, especially with its newest Android 14 beta version. I actually made a video dedicated to these exclusive features. I'll drop that link in the cards if you're interested. All in all, I'm really looking forward to where they take this OS moving forward. Sometimes I have to remind myself that this company is still just a couple years old, and I admire that they're always looking for ways to improve. I can relate because I'm always looking for new ways to improve my filmmaking, video editing, entrepreneurship skills, or even just my lifestyle, and Skillshare has made it really easy to do so. Sure, they sponsored this video, but I genuinely believe they have the best online learning community that can make 2024 the year your side hustle comes to life. For instance, they have powerhouse courses featuring prominent creative professionals like Marcus Brown Lee dropping knowledge on YouTube success, Ali Abdal spilling productivity secrets, and Mike Boyd revealing how to master any skill. The list goes on and on, and there are a ton more topics that you can learn about, including illustration, music, graphic design, marketing, photography, and so much more. Skillshare has everything you need to turn your passion into a side hustle that can get you an extra paycheck in 2024. Some fantastic classes that I've been loving are this learning path course to help me beat procrastination whenever I start any project, and some of these new AI courses that have helped me discover some tremendous secrets to have AI work for me. 
Now here's the best part. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. So don't wait, because now is the time to learn that skill or start that side hustle you've always wanted within the upcoming new year. Overall, day-to-day -day performance on the Nothing Phone 2 has been fine, and I haven't had any major complaints or gripes. Battery life has always performed very well, I can easily get through a full day's use on a single charge, and I've comfortably averaged around 6-7 hours of screen time with mixed usage. Plus, if I even wanted to, I could pull a day and a half on a single charge with extremely light usage. When juicing up the phone, I love using their slick, transparent USB-C cable. It's definitely one of the best dials I've come across, and it happens to charge the phone in just under an hour, which is, it's fine. It's not amazing, but 45 watts is a welcome upgrade from the 33 watts that we got last year. It's also nice having the convenience of both wireless and reverse wireless charging. The fingerprint reader is okay. As I mentioned earlier, it's placed lower than I'd like it to be, but it gets the job done. Every once in a while, I'll experience misreads, but it hasn't caused any headaches. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 has been an excellent chipset, getting me through daily tasks without any issues, and casual gaming was a pleasure. With benchmark metrics, you'll see that this chip doesn't rival the raw performance of the 8 Gen 2, but that's to be expected. The 8 Plus Gen 1 was definitely the right move for this phone over the regular 8 Gen 1 as it's faster, more efficient, and provides plenty of power for everyday use. Okay, now moving on to the cameras, they're actually pretty impressive. Recent software updates have even improved the performance, and photos get pushed out with great dynamic range, natural looking colors, solid sharpness, and fantastic detail. In well-lit conditions, you'll get shots that can hold their own against the best. Low light results have room for improvement though. I mean, they're not bad, and I love the glyph light helps in these dark situations, but they can come out looking less detailed and noticeably softer. The image processing does a decent job of mitigating some of these issues, which is good, but it's definitely far from perfect. On top of this, as some of you know, this setup lacks a telephoto lens, so unfortunately, you will miss out on versatility and you need to rely on cropping the image when zooming in. And that kind of sucks, because nowadays there's a lot more emphasis on zoom capabilities when it comes to smartphones. And because of this, almost every phone out there has one. So I did miss having a telephoto lens on my arsenal, but it's not the end of the world. Plus, pictures taken at 2x zoom came out looking better than I expected. But of course, nothing as good as an actual telephoto lens, especially when you start zooming in farther. Video quality was also not the greatest. Even though it has improved with a few software updates, it can still be pretty inconsistent. Some footage came out looking decent, others not so much. It isn't as sharp or as lively as I want it to be, stabilization needs some work, and video through the front facing camera is capped at 1080p. Simply put, video capture still needs significant improvement. When it comes to breaking down smartphone cameras in general, it can be a bit difficult to do so with phones in this price range. You can only expect so much when looking at something that hovers around the $500 to $600 mark. But with mid-range phones getting better and better by the year, it seems the bar gets raised each time, and being critical becomes easier. I will say the cameras are nothing to sneeze at. Again, they're impressive, all things considered, and they're more than serviceable for everyday photography. But they're not as polished and optimized as you may want them to be especially when you compare them to something like the Google Pixel 7a, or even the iPhones. The Nothing Phone 2 has a lot going for itself, but depending on who you are, the downsides are pretty glaring. Like the IP54 rating, as opposed to the IP67, uh, means that you don't get that same water and dust resistance peace of mind you get with most other phones. There's no case or charging brick included as well, plus all the other things I mentioned already. With mid-range competition heating up rapidly, this phone can be a tough sell, especially if you're not enthralled by the Glyph interface. As of this video, the base model of 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage is $50 off starting at $549. And then as you start to add extra RAM and storage space, the price increases by increments of 50. Either way, with the hype dying down, I still think the Nothing Phone 2 is a nice device. It's not perfect, but even if you were to ignore the lights completely, it's a very solid option in this tier of smartphones. I like it, and it actually checks a lot of boxes. Of course, with some caveats. 
Uh, you could say it checks the main boxes though. It genuinely has a good display and hardware, good performance, good battery life, and good cameras. In addition to that, it's made by a company that's hungry to stand out from the crowd with a growing community cheering for its success. If you're into that, then this is the phone for you. Let me know what you think of the Nothing Phone 2. Click this video right here to see a bunch of cool exclusive Nothing OS features. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kupow!